compressors, the black box of audio production. Your signal goes in, stuff happens, then it sounds different. What does a compressor do, and how can you control it? At surface level, a compressor reduces the volume of loud sounds. But very often, a compressor is used to make things louder. How? Well, let's imagine this shape is our audio signal. The taller part is louder, while the shorter part is quieter. This difference between loud and quiet is what's referred to as dynamics. A compressor's main function is to manipulate dynamics. With a compressor, we can set it to reduce input signal when this thing's loud and do nothing when it's quiet. As you can see, the taller part of the shape is now shorter, while the short part is unchanged. But when we take the whole signal, the output signal, and raise its gain, you can now see that the peak loudness is the same as it was originally. But now, the difference between the loudest part of the signal and the quietest is much less. Thus, compression. Let's see and hear what this looks like in a real-world audio example. You can see in the waveform of this guitar recording that there's a quiet part and a loud part. This is what it sounds like before it's been compressed. Now we use a compressor to lower the signal when it's loud and do nothing when it's quiet. Then on the output signal, we raise the gain to bring it to its peak loudness that it was before. And that sounds like this. This is the concept of compression. But how do we control this thing? What the f do all these knobs do? The first thing to understand is the threshold and ratio controls. Now to understand this, we need to understand that when we're talking audio, we're talking decibels, baby. DB. We talk decibels, baby. It's how volume, gain, amplitude is measured. The threshold is a specific DB level. It's a line, and when audio crosses that line, compression is engaged. But it's important to understand that the amount of signal being reduced is dependent on the threshold, as well as the ratio. The easiest way to visualize how the threshold and ratio work together to determine gain reduction is actually to think about how much gain is being preserved above the threshold line. A ratio of one to one is actually not applying any gain reduction at all. But a ratio of two to one is gonna reduce the gain above the threshold line until half of the signal that was above the threshold line is left. In turn, a ratio of 4 to 1 would reduce the gain above the threshold line until one-fourth of those decibels are left. A ratio of infinity to 1 is leaving nothing left above the threshold line. It's completely squashing it. So if your signal is coming in at negative 5 decibels, and your threshold is set at negative 6 decibels, there's one decibel above the threshold line. If your ratio was infinity to 1, that whole decibel above the threshold line would be gone. So the amount of signal being output is negative six decibels, your threshold. If your ratio is two to one, half of the signal above the negative six line would be taken away. So since the amount of signal above that line is one, 0.5 decibels would be reduced and your output signal would be negative 5.5 decibels. For visualization sake, I like to think of threshold and ratio as the vertical controls of the compressor. They're controlling how much the signal is moving up and down. But audio also moves in a horizontal manner, time. This is where attack and release come into play. So when our audio hits that threshold line, we know that the threshold and ratio settings are gonna trigger how much gain reduction is going to happen. But the attack setting is gonna tell us how long it takes for that full gain reduction to kick in. If the amount of gain that's gonna be reduced is two decibels, and the attack setting is at five milliseconds. Once it crosses the threshold line, the amount of gain being reduced is gonna ramp from zero to two in five milliseconds. If the attack setting is zero milliseconds, that gain reduction is gonna happen all at once. It's immediate. Now release is a similar idea. Once that signal goes below the threshold line and the gain reduction stops, the release setting will determine how long it takes for that gain reduction to go back to zero. So if your release is 80 milliseconds, it's gonna take 80 milliseconds for the signal to go from two decibels of gain reduction to zero after the signal crosses back under the line. The last core control to talk about is the makeup gain or the output gain. When we say the word compression, 
we're thinking about things pushing in, two forces. The controls we've talked about already are the downward forces, where the makeup gain is the upward force. After we've compressed our signal, we have a much more consistent volume level across our audio. We can use the makeup gain to dial in the actual volume level we want out of that consistent audio. Maybe we want it to be quieter than it originally was. Or maybe we want it to be the same. Hell, we could do whatever we want. We could make it louder. It's all about what your goal is by using the compressor. This video is about understanding this tool and knowing how to use it for yourself, using your ears to dial in what sounds best to you.